What a lovely afternoon. Absolutely nothing can ruin this. Let's put it in reverse for just a second. The morning's April 29th, 2025, and the SBC issues an enhanced risk for damaging winds from the Kentucky and Indiana borders and all the way up into New York. And since it was my day off, I decided, like a total idiot, that I should drop a hundred bucks and drive all the way up into western Pennsylvania from my small home in Virginia to chase this day. Yeah, not my brightest decision. As I arrived in western Pennsylvania north of Somerset, I noticed that temperatures were in the low 80s with dew points in the low 60s. Although not supportive of open warm sector convection, there was attempts with multiple cumulus fields going up in the western quadrant of the state primarily centered around Pittsburgh. This helped cool down the environment ahead of the morning MCS that was later to arrive that afternoon. However, it would lead to much more disastrous consequences than what I could anticipate as the morning MCS that was currently raging on in Ohio would remain and flow dominant throughout most of the day. Oh! The best road. Shout out to the quality of yeah, West Pennsylvania okay. roads. Look at all those bases. All this cumulus just went up. Time is currently 4.32 and we have a huge MCS. Uh, let me close it. They have issued a tornado warning for downtown Pittsburgh. We are dropping south to see if we can intercept that segment, especially as it goes more uh, eastward. At the light, turn right onto Lucerne Road. Okay, yeah, I know. Um, I'm trying to purposely play my uh, targets. Continue right. on Lucerne Road for two miles. I'm trying to play my targets right here. The one difficult thing about chasing out here is this uh this terrain's not the best you're kind of shoved in there in the Appalachians and this is one of the only like large areas where you have openings but it's still very hilly I mean you can see obviously I mean we're like 10 minutes from the location and this is what we're dealing with so yeah as I slowly approached the MCS, which was now exiting the Pittsburgh Metro, I noticed that it's becoming increasingly scalloped along the northern edge of the bow and decided the next best target was probably down near West Lebanon, Pennsylvania, where it would move east and we would likely see multiple circulations. As I stop for a second to get my bearings in the region, you'll notice even as the squall line is at this point, only about 15 miles away, there's no discernible features. This is one of my only cases I have under my books, which a squall line, which was this destructive, had it in no features whatsoever. Just a clouded base and gray skies with a rain shaft behind it in the distance moving towards your location. This makes it feel a lot more dubious in nature than it actually was. I decided the next best decision with the chase was to hang south and stay in West Lebanon as the scalloped line of circulations approached my location. This would prove to be my most vital decision about the chase and not remaining in the forested regions. There was a gap in time, probably about four minutes, that allowed for photos to be taken of the individual circulations along the leading edge of the line, primarily along the bow. And in this case, these circulations were a lot more pronounced in nature than what they usually would be. They had little mini cuts and they were defined by either cinnamon bun type circulations or full on lowerings within the leading edge there. Although these weren't my strongest shots of the sequence, they were definitely ones which I do remember for 
being there before a chase, primarily for scientific purposes. You don't usually get to see these leading edge circulations so pronounced in real time. They're usually shrouded just behind the rain shaft. I think this is definitely the most interesting part of the day as it indicates that either A, these were so heavily sheared that the rain was still displaced along the leading edge, which was most likely the case, or B, they were just weirdly positioned like this. Either way, still makes for a cool breakdown, which in looking back at this type of day. So I didn't want to be caught lacking in this region. There was a lot of power lines. And there were a lot of objects which could become airborne. So I decided to move to an area near West Lebanon that is more open, no power lines. Any only objects that would be able to be lofted are trash in fields or a sign that may go flying. In intercepts like this, the most important thing to realize is your safety is top priority. In any area which is usually lacking in these dangerous factors can usually serve as the best points for an intercept. The last thing you want to do is have your vehicle get hit by flying pieces of house debris or power lines coming down. There's all sorts of these factors. But this would lead up to one of the most insane intercepts I've ever had on a storm, at least east of the Appalachians so far in my chasing career. At this location, it allowed for one last photo opportunity, and here you can really see how featureless the base is. There is a distinct lack of any shelf-like structure. It's flat and in rain shaft, and within the, that rain shaft, there was an estimate of 120 mile per hour wind gusts that would later cause major damage to the region, especially the power infrastructure. Maybe about a minute later after coming to a stop, you can see how winds would start to kick up. I would get a 90 mile per hour wind gust on my anemometer before running inside my car. This would be the last time I would be outside that car and I would remain in the truck for probably about five or ten whole minutes as the winds would later overtake my position. I'll let the footage speak for itself.
As I collected myself, I went back into West Lebanon. I wanted to make sure that people were okay and that there was no major damage or injuries in the area. Sadly, there was an injury and there was also a roof ripped off a double wide. There was multiple trees down in and around the community, which made it navigating near impossible. There was also many lines down in many areas in the community that did not have power. This was the same fate as multiple dozen other communities in West Pennsylvania that day, as many suffered tremendous loss in power and had to wait a couple of days to get both their power back and their stuff in working order. This was also not the only destructive severe weather event in this region, as only a couple days later, a low would cause a severe weather event that would cause damaging winds and destructive hail to the region. This was a two day event which hampered recovery efforts. So, in the end of it all, I drove home with $125 less in my bank account that I could have definitely spent on a better day. Hungry and wet. I was very wet. But other than that, it was an awesome experience. I would definitely probably do it again. I say probably because I'm an idiot, so it's a given. Anyways, I hope y'all like this video, and please like and subscribe because the next one is going to be coming soon. Thank you, and have a good day.